All right, this is gonna be a really short video. I just wanna give uh, my followers an update on my car. Um, it's July 4th, Independence Day. Happy Independence Day to you guys. Um, I am in the middle of addressing a lot of the stuff I should have addressed a long time ago. Um, but I'm also doing a lot of upgrades that I've always wanted to do um, or adding parts that I have gathered or hoarded over the last handful of years, probably 10 years or so, uh, things that I should have done long ago or that I really wanted to do. So what, what does that mean? Well, I have, I have bumpers, uh, bumper, front bumper, uh, version six lip, version six grill, which I already had in the past, but they've broken or been worn or bad paint or whatever. Um, but now I have new ones, new in box, got them from Japan like 12 years ago. They've been sitting in the box for a long time. Um, I have a new engine, I have a new turbo, I have dual injector TGV, so that means eight injectors on the engine. I have a new front differential, I have to rebuild the rear differential, I have a new rear subframe coming from TSS Fab. I have one of his first original versions of it, here I'll show it to you, if this thing will let me do it. Let's go here, she's dirty. But that is one of the first versions that he ever made. Not a whole lot of reinforcement between the front and the rear tube, as you can see. And honestly, it's a little bendy. Factory is really bendy, but that one's a little bendy. And there could be, there's improvement to it. And his new ones have lots of reinforcement as well as extra um, mounting points. So I have a new one of those coming. I have new two-piece rotors, these are gyro discs. Um, the rears are a decent shape. They can be better, but the fronts are kind of hammered. So I got front ones. Uh, new pads that aren't as aggressive as the pads that are on right now. Um, I have freshly powder-coated Brembo's. Not these, but I have freshly powder-coated ones um, that are going to go on. I have... Um, boy, I have a lot of stuff. Let me think about it. Um, I'm going to do some frame stiffening, uh, or chassis stiffening, I should say, to the car. I'm going to permanently weld a bar in between the strut towers in the back instead of having a strut tower brace. Um, the one I had um, was hitting part of the frame because the damn car was so flexible that it would actually bend and hit part of the rear shelf. Um, so even having the brace there, it just wasn't strong enough uh, to fix the floppiness of this chassis. Now, that being said, when I took it off, I noticed an immediate difference and how much flex there was back there. So there are definitely big gains to be had um, in the rear of the car. So I'm gonna put a big two inch or two and a quarter inch pipe between the strut towers in the rear and then paint that up as well as add some angular bracing down to the frame where the uh, subframe in the rear mounts. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of bracing along the bottom of the car, just trying to figure out where I wanna do it. I found some spots I think would, would be good in increasing the rigidity of the chassis. Uh, these things are so flexible that when you put them, if you were to jack up a corner or something over here, you know, or over here, the uh, the door would catch. Um, and I definitely would like it to be um, a little stiffer than that. It's not a 52 Corvette or something. So, or 62 Corvette, sorry, my dad's 62 does that. You, you can't jack it up um, and then you either have to have the door open or closed. You can't do it one or the other because it catches. So I don't want that. Um, so in with all this, I am also doing something that hasn't been done um, on a GC or GD chassis. I am doing a 2015 WRX electric power steering or electric assist steering rack. So some call it electric power steering, some call it whatever, but it's what it is. It'll have a 15 WRX. Um, here's the rack. And one of the tie rods and one of the things and some other stuff that I got floating around here. But uh, the cross member is in the car right now for the WRX. And it's only kind of in the car. It's in place in the car being held up by my, my trans jack. So here's a 15 WRX cross member. Now, surprisingly enough, the mounting points were perfect, they went right in. The bolts that come on the GC were not long enough, but it appears that the Forrester ones 
for the same era, if I could 05 Forester, would work because the Forester one's like an inch and a quarter longer, which is exactly what this thing needs. So I already ordered the Forester ones um, to mount this and see how that goes. Um, so good thing was, hey, the cross member fits, which means the rack is gonna be easy to put in. But there's always a hang up, right? So what I'm finding is that mount right there, that guy, obviously on both sides, the rear lower control arm mount is back too far. Um, I don't know if it's a show or not. It's not great. Now there are lots of potential ways of fixing that, but I'm trying to figure out a way that's fundamentally sound to fix that. I don't want to just notch the mount because um, you would lose some of the clamping force on it. It wouldn't be even. I mean, initially I might end up just notching it, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to just notch it. So I'm trying to figure out if I need to create another piece right here. If I make this part and just have the holes different or whether I weld this one up because it is steel weld this up entirely and then redrill holes to take that amount of offset out of it. That might be the easiest way to do it. Um, or go to a custom arm. Could potentially try doing the 15 control arm. Um, do the 15 control arm. The rear mount is totally different and the control arm goes wide sooner than this and it hits here. So uh, you have to like, smash this part of the frame rail to get the control arm to fit. And I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want to say, oh, you want a control arm? Smash your frame rail. And I don't want to have to build a custom control arm either. A full custom control arm um, is an expensive fix. Whereas just one piece like this would be a cheap fix. Uh, well, relatively cheap in relation to a whole custom control arm. Um, but also I don't want to be forced to run Heim joints or, um, motorsports grade bushings or solid, you know, joints or whatever. I want the option to have rubber mounts on the car. So I don't have to unnecessarily increase NVH in the car, um, to the point where every bump in the road is rattling my teeth. You know, I don't, I don't want that. It's not very far off, and that's and that's um, and that's comforting. I'm glad. Now this frame, this one I got off eBay for like seventy bucks. I think it's a little bent. Um, this car could be bent too. I know that this car had a had a boo boo once in the past. Um, could be a little a little bent, but the frame doesn't sit flat on the ground, so I know the, the frame's not totally great. But it's only a little bit, um, and that's why I put both arms on here. I was to check, make sure it wasn't like. You know, I was off because I only tried one side and one side was hammered. It's it's in place and they're both off the same amount. So I don't think that that alone would be enough to cause this problem. Um, so that's where I'm at. Next I'm going to do uh, is, next I'm going to do is take the inner tie rods off of my old RS rack. Um, this electric rack doesn't have the gigantic inner tie rod threads that the 15 STI rack has. A lot of people have had to get inserts made, you know, or have something made to adapt the um, rack to the inner tie rods on the 15s, um, which have a faster ratio than this rack, by the way. This one is 2.8 turns lock to lock, I think is what it is, and the STI was two and a half. Um, so it's not as fast as the uh, STI rack, but it's not as slow as the GC rack either, which is really bad. It's like three and a half turns or something. It feels like you're driving a truck. You just like, keep turning that wheel. Short video. This is short for me, woman. She's like, I thought this was a short video. Yeah. It's only nine minutes, 20 seconds so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to see if those threads are similar or different or what. Um, the overall width of a VA chassis is much wider than that of a GC. So I don't really have the option of using the factory um, inner tie rods from a VA unless I'm modifying them, cutting them down on the end, threading the shaft further or something like that. Um, and clearly I don't wanna do that, um, but uh, if I have to, I will. I'd rather cut and thread than weld. 
I don't want to add um, a point of brittle fracture. Uh, have a nice heat affected zone that gets super brittle and snaps on someone, that would be very terrible. So I don't want that. My goal is just to make it as cost effective as possible. Now, the electric rack is not gonna be for everybody because the electric rack requires a functioning CAN bus. And you're like, wait, isn't that a GC? By the way, that's not dirt, that's undercoating. I had that in New York. Uh, yes, so this car is powered by an Mtron uh, KV12. And the Mtron has most of the factory CAN bus data um, available for transmit, uh, for transmitting or receiving. Um, the thing that it doesn't have right now is going to be steering uh, angle. So the electric rack, to the best of um, my research so far, requires RPM, TPS, vehicle speed, and steering angle. Um, the GC did not come with a steering angle sensor, um, and the early GDs didn't either. However, 06 and 07 did, maybe 05, I don't know. But no 06 and 07 did, and I just happened to have in my hoarded stash of Subaru parts a steering column from a 2007 STI, complete with steering position sensor. Um, luckily, the steering position sensor also outputs information directly to the CAN bus. It doesn't need to be fed to an ECU for interpretation. It puts its data on the CAN bus. Now, whether it's formatted correctly for the 15 coming out of the 07, I am doubtful. But if I can interpret that data into the uh, Mtron on one CAN bus, I can also have it transmit that data back onto the CAN bus in the right format, provided the addresses are different, hoping the addresses are different. If not, I'll have to bring it into a different bus and then transmit onto the other bus. Um, but regardless, I believe it can be done. Um, and I also read that if it didn't have steering position, um, you just didn't get the full assist. You got like a partial assist and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with a partial assist. I feel a lot of power steering systems are way too aggressive anyways. And you can't feel the tire on the road. Um, you can't feel when the tire is about to break traction. There's just so much that you lose uh, when you're when you're driving, especially if you're driving at the limit. Um, the best driving at the limit that I've had has been on a car with no power steering. This car with no power steering when it failed. You could feel the sidewalls flex in the wheel. You knew exactly, I knew, I don't know if you did, I knew exactly when that tire was about to break free. I could do it at will because um, you could feel it, the feedback through the wheel. So that was uh, that was a life-changing experience for me when it comes to cars and stuff. What are you doing over there, sweetheart? Trying to put this together. Okay. I don't know if I'm doing it right. Doesn't have instructions. It does, but it's not right in its picture only. Okay, I'll give you a second, a hand in a second. Anyway, so that's the next challenge: is seeing if the tie rods fit. If they do. Stellar, if they don't, well, then I got to figure something else out. Luckily, there is um, manufacturers like Moog and others where they have all the tie rod specs on the website from inner thread pitch, outer thread pitch, overall diameter uh, and length and everything. So you can go through the database and go, well, I know I need this size inner thread pitch. And so you select that. And I know I need this size outer thread pitch because you want to use your, your outer tie rod and you select that. And then the pipe eight tie rods and then they'll give you their lengths. Um, and with something like that, you could potentially find that a tie rod off of a geo prism or something um, was the right one for, uh, for your application. So if it doesn't fit the rack, then that's what I'll be doing. I'll be measuring the uh, old VA tie rod uh, measuring the new or my current tie rods and figure out what I need. So that's it. So that's my that's my current issue. Is this guy right here um, that I need to brainstorm a fix for? And then um, everything else though seems to be going all right. The CAN bus data was really good to find, and I'm really excited about the electric rack because I don't want a power steering pump because I want that real estate. I might use that real estate for an oil pump. I might use it for an AC compressor and put my oil pump in the AC spot. I don't know, but I definitely want to uh, free up that real estate, not have hoses by the exhaust and all of that and figure out 
what I can do on the other side of the engine where that pump used to be. Um, I'm really excited about that. Oh, and I'm also doing drive wire conversion on the car too, so I can have cruise control without the big module. Um, Cause I'm still gonna keep AC in this thing. I figure what else I'm doing. Lots of stuff, lots of stuff.